I talked a little bit about the idea of purification. And what happens is when we are identifying ourselves with this experience, we are creating more karma. And karma, unlike what is often talked about in, in our culture of, oh, you know, karma's going to get them, <laughs> it's not really a system of punishment and reward. It is a very objective, it doesn't really care what you're doing, what you haven't done, but it just records the moment of what you believe that you have done and the intention that you have placed into your doing that. So in every moment, even with someone taking a breath or walking their dog, there are these little, you can imagine them like little seeds that are sort of chipped off to the side. Every, everything that you think you're doing, these little seeds are just getting thrown off and they become karma. And they are planting intentions for future experiences as well. They kind of build up. So as you are working with a particular idea, say if you really, really love chocolate, for instance, every time you go and you have your chocolate, karma is being created around that chocolate. And all of the love that you have for that chocolate is also being put into it, whether it's healthy or not healthy. And so the intention of it being a healthy enjoyment versus being some sort of escape also gets thrown into your karma. And as you continue to work with that, the, the seeds themselves also start to come back and say, oh, well, he really likes chocolate, and this is the way he really likes it. So let's bring about an experience that also reinforces this idea, because he's already told us he likes it. So then we create more karma around it, and it starts to shift, it starts to evolve. And in its very extreme case in that kind of thing, it, it becomes what we think of as an addiction. You know, the karma starts to drive you into doing something. And so we're wanting to balance out our karma. We're wanting to eliminate our karma. And the way to do that is to understand the process in which it happens, which is that it is my awareness, my witnessing self, in association with an action that occurs that thinks it's doing something and there's an energetic intention. And that's what chucks the karma out. Well, if I can get myself a little bit distant from it and really see it as sort of an unfolding energy rather than something that I'm doing, and it takes that ability to start, you know, to detach, to draw yourself away from it, then I have an opportunity then to first stop producing karma because I'm at least just sort of free in the moment. And then when I get really good at it, I can start allowing those karmic patterns to come up hold them in witness instead of doing something with them and allow them to start even disappearing, to start taking them away and removing them. And so the practice of Aum, the, the mantra chanting, gives us an opportunity to start clearing out our karma. As The more that we're able to focus, because the energy of, of the mantra itself is going to sort of start to expand you into a more witness state. You're going to be focusing on your sound, your sensation, whatever your experience of the practice is. And that's going to take your mind off of, or your awareness off of what you might normally think about. Oh, I've got to pay the bills. I need to go to the grocery store. I need to do this. This person did this rude thing to me. All of the things that we would normally think about, we're trying to sort of push to the background. Well, that gives the karma-making process a rest as well. And the energy that's going to be moving through the experience then has an opportunity to start burning those karmas away because you are not in the process of actively creating them. So from a spiritual perspective, it becomes an opportunity to start clearing up your karmic experience. And this is very valuable to people who are working in the, in the tantric uh, path. So... The way that this kind of thing might experience, and one of the examples that I like to give, is if you yourself or someone you know um, is sort of a road rager, <laughs> you know, you're, you're going out, you're, you're driving down the street, somebody cuts you off, and that person or yourself, usually someone else, um, goes into a rage and starts screaming how rude this person is, and you know, 
just the whole day is ruined. And for the rest of the day, they're just so angry about how this, how rude this was. So they start taking up their mantra practice, and they're doing their mantra. And over time, they've become a little more peaceful, although they may not know it yet. <laughs> And one day, you're out to lunch with them, and they drive down the road, and somebody cuts them off, and they just go on talking about how they're going to go to the baseball game this weekend, and, and they don't even react, they don't respond at all. The karma has been removed, and that's the kind of unfolding that happens when you start removing karma. Different things that would trigger us in different ways, whether we think of those as positive or negative, of course, we always want the negative things to go first. But whether we think of them as positive or negative, different things that would normally create a response in us start to fade away. And in that, we become free because what happens under normal circumstances is you can think of it kind of like a, a musical instrument of every time you push the, the piano middle C, you get this certain note, you get this certain sound of response. Well, the same thing happens with us with our karmic patterns. Every time somebody pushes the right button, a pattern comes out, a vibration comes out of us. It rises up and we cannot help but respond. So in the road rage, someone cuts us off, that's middle C, the response is in whatever form that may come out. So by removing the karmic pattern, we remove the trigger inside of us. We just sort of cut the wire and nobody can make any sound there anymore. And from that perspective, that one little place in our consciousness becomes free. And then more karmas get removed. And so we're constantly sort of removing different places from within ourselves and becoming more peaceful, more calm, less things are able to react, you know, cause us to react. And we become more peaceful and more calm from that too. And so that's sort of the unfolding of the spiritual you know, aspect of, as a spiritual path of really healing and clearing things out. And as those karmic patterns are removed, then we're able to start seeing more clearly other layers of places that we may be attached and start to expand our consciousness outward gradually over and over again until we get ourselves to a very clear and open space where we're much more able to identify and move into our true nature as consciousness. When all of the patterns are gone, then the tantric literature calls that enlightenment or self-realization, that you have become free and perfectly identified with your true self as pure consciousness, and that's where self-realization comes, it's literally the realization of yourself. So that is the way that the karmic patterns begin getting removed.